After World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union became two global superpowers. With time, tensions between them grew very fast, mainly due to different ideologies and their desire to increase their influence and control on the rest of the world. The division of Germany laid the foundation for the Cold War, an era of political and ideological tension between the two superpowers and conflicting ideologies. After Cuba became a communist country, South America was also a battleground for the Soviets and the US to expand their influence. And now there was a socialist government in Chile when Salvador Allende became president of Chile in 1970. Allende's government aimed to advance workers' interest and replace the judicial system with socialist legality. Female workforce participation was also significantly increased and it paved the way for more women to go for higher positions. Being a socialist leader, his policies were based on nationalization and equality and had always been a strong voice for labor class. Allende also had some huge supporters in the Chile football team, two of which were Leonardo Vélez and Carlos Casley, whose left leaning was not hidden from anyone. Chile also started to have a very strong relationship with the Soviet Union and other communist nations. But US President Richard Nixon was not happy with the growing socialization in Chile and their close ties to the USSR. The Nixon administration organized secret operatives and used US financial pressures to destabilize Allende's government and to stop the rising socialism in the region. Some leaks have also disclosed that Nixon did not want the Allende government formed in the first place and even had ordered a top secret mission to the CIA to prevent the formation of the left government by a military coup but failed. But that did not stop him from taking further actions in overthrowing the democratically elected government of Chile. On September 11, 1973, A military coup led to the overthrow of the government in Chile. The presidential palace, known as La Moneda, was targeted by bombings, resulting in seizure of power by General Augusto Pinochet's military junta. President Allende took his own life during this tumultuous event. The football history boys in their article have mentioned this in relation to Allende's last moments before taking his own life. After this military coup, what followed was a very long period of military rule, dictatorship, torture and heavy punishments for left supporters and anyone who opposed the military government. Thousands of prisoners were rounded up and taken to detention centers around the country. Chile was a strong ally of the USSR before this coup, but now their relations have severed quickly due to this incident. As per the FIFA rules of that time, European teams were required to play a South American team to qualify for the World Cup. and Chile was required to play USSR for their World Cup qualifier. The match was scheduled in Moscow and amid the recent tensions between the two country, Chilean players were warned of security concerns, but they landed safely apart from the cold welcome in Russia. The match ended with a goalless draw, which was disappointing for the USSR, who expected a comfortable win against what seemed to be a relatively weaker side. It was mainly due to two reasons. First, Russian side underestimated the Chilean team who were instead very well prepared despite not much aware of Russia's style of play. Another reason or maybe the main reason was the wrong or biased referee decisions in the favor of Chile team. As admitted by many including Chilean players, that Brazilian referee was an anti-communist and made several wrong decisions against the Russian side. But after the draw, the match was going to second leg which would be played in Chile. USSR refused to play the second leg in Chile due to the venue in which the match was going to be played. It was Estadio Nacional, the national stadium of Chile. The reason for USSR refusal to play there was that the stadium was one of the biggest or maybe the biggest and most famous detention centers used by the military government for left supporters and dissenters. The place was used for imprisonment, torture and even killing of many prisoners. And because of this USSR was completely against playing in the stadium, especially when those who were tortured were largely left sympathizers. USSR asked FIFA to schedule the match at a venue in another country. Chile opposed this request strongly as they did not object to playing the first leg in Moscow, so USSR should also do the same. But USSR did not agree to that and expressed their discomfort in playing in a stadium stained with blood. FIFA sent its delegation to the stadium for investigating the same and to nobody's surprise FIFA was fine with Chile stadium for conducting the match there and did not care to thoroughly inspect the stadium or be more diligent and skeptical in the investigation before giving a clean sheet to Chile. It has been reported that even on that day prisoners were still detained in the very stadium but they were hidden underneath the stadium and could not scream for help as they all were held at gunpoint. Abilio Dialmeda, vice president of FIFA was also part of the FIFA's delegation to the stadium. 
He was Brazilian and was also a huge supporter of then Brazil's military government. So a delegation FIFA giving clean sheet to Chile so easily was also not that much shocking. He even said that don't worry about the international media campaign against Chile. The same thing happened to Brazil and it's going to stop soon. But despite FIFA's green light, the Soviets did not move from their stand. They protested and made it clear that they will not play in that stadium. They also raised concern about how FIFA handled the situation. A day before the match, USSR formally announced that they will not travel to play. The official statement said, On moral grounds, the Soviet sportsmen cannot at current times play in San Diego Stadium, which is stained with the blood of Chilean patriots. The Soviet Union make a resolute protest and declares that under the present conditions when FIFA is act against the dictates of common sense and allows the Chilean reactionaries to lead her blindfolded, it must refuse to take part in the playoff match on Chile's soil and hold the FIFA administration responsible for it. But Chile proceeded to play the match nonetheless. The president of Chile announced that the Soviets have been disqualified from the playoff. But as per the requirement, Chile had to be present in the match and hence they played the match in the stadium without an opponent. The Chilean players took the field, kicked off and scored into an empty net since there was no opponent to restart the match. After the goal, the match was called soon after. And Chile qualified for the World Cup which was to be held in West Germany in 1974. Chile entered the World Cup after one of the most controversial matches in football history. They also faced heavy criticism from the fans around the world. But the World Cup stage did not last beyond the group stage. They were eliminated in the group stage without winning a single match and scored just one goal. Even the forward Carlos Gasly became the first player to receive a straight red card in the World Cup. Although a reason for his poor performance was attributed to the brutal torture given to his mother by the military government which was said to be a direct warning to Carlos not to speak against the military, especially abroad. Carlos Kaisley, while remembering the match, once said that team did the most ridiculous thing. It was a worldwide embarrassment. Military rule in Chile ended in 1990 when an elected government came into the power. But the time of Junta is still a hot topic in Chile. While Estadio Nacional is still used for football matches, but a section has been dedicated to the memory of prisoners were detained and tortured during the military government's time. A Chilean journalist recalled the comments of a fan during the match who said, Surely we're going to go down in the history because we must be the first national team in the history that without any shame or embarrassment scored a goal against a ghost team. But FIFA's decision to insist on playing only on Estadio Nacional still does not sound convincible at all and led to one of the most embarrassing and weird matches in football history. It is also one of the many huge examples of how much football and politics are related, no matter whether you want to mix the two or not.